Hello and welcome to a new video. Today's video discusses how to design the cables that connect field instrument to PLCs. There are several transmitters, valves, and other types of instrument at the field that needs to be wired to our PLC or our DCS. In this picture, you can see here a control valve, junction box, a lot of transmitters, which needs to be connected to our DCS. Here you can see that all of those instruments scattered all over the place in your plant. So assuming you have a lot of instruments here, so one, two, three instruments, you need to connect them to a junction box so you can have one home run cable all the way from the junction box to your DCS or PLC marshalling cabinets. Here we can see that's all cables coming now. Those are all home run cable going to our marshalling. Here you can see there is a lot of cable trays. One of them has very big cables. That's not an instrument. It's cables which will feed our motors. So that is strictly electric cables. And they are on their own cable tray. The instrument has other two cable trays. We'll assume that this is our cable trays, those two here. And this two, one of them is dedicated for analog, digital, and DC signals. And the second one is for your AC wires and cables. So all AC signals shall be combined in a separate cables that then the analog and the digital DC signal that shall be grouped also in a different cable. Here you can see this is your marshalling and all your cable coming from bottom entry in this case. Other cases you have a top entry cables. Here your MCC and in this case we also need to run a cables between our MCC and our cabinet PLC or DCS marshalling. When you go into your marshalling, you have the cable entry and you need to distribute your cable on all those terminal blocks. In this case, you can see they are fuses, terminal blocks, or you can connect them directly to your system. Let's start with the first option here. You have one cable from your transmitter to the junction box, which is, has only one signal. It's an analog, and that's why we call it JBA, junction box for analog signals. And this is our analog output signal here. And now this is our home run cable, which carry all our analog from this junction box to this marshalling. The digital signals from our switches, limit switches, and so on, goes into our JBD, junction box for digital and then we have one home run cable for them it's more economical if you have a bigger system or very big system in refinery to run all your digital signals in a separate junction box you can run if you have one or two signals you can run them with the analog but those cables are different than this cable those are expensive than this cable. When the home run cable goes into the marshalling, it fans out on the terminals here. So here you can see the green line for the first transmitter goes into junction box. And this is multi pairs. So this is one pair. This is maybe six or 12. And then when it fans here, you will take the first one goes to uh, card, the first card, or the second card. So the signals on the first cable, when it fans here, all of them, they don't go to one card. They may go to two, three, four cards. As you can see, this is an analog output, so it must come from a different card than the analog input, but they run in the same home run cable to the field. 
Another way when you send your signals to your marshalling, you have something in between the cards and the marshalling. The fastest terminal blocks, they are a quick way to connect your system. From one side, they connect to your card through pre installed cable, and they will do from this side to the marshalling. You will have the cross wiring. So it's one to one between the card and these fast terminal blocks, but the cross wiring between this, because the first channel here goes to a different cable than the second channel. So what this give us as a benefit, because we're going to pay a lot of money. Here you can see that the cross wiring is made already at the manufacturing stage, at the staging area, where you have all your cross wiring, and you can change it easily later on. Your cable will be landed on terminals 1 to 50 in sequence. And then the cross wiring is happening between this marshalling and your fast terminal block. In this case, the work at site will be so quick because you will terminate the cable very quickly. You don't have to fan the cable, some here, some here, and some here. A third way of doing it, some companies start to do this. This is an Emerson system where your cable will land on a terminal block here and then each one of those modules they can change to be analog input or analog output or a different these systems is a little bit more expensive but it saves a lot of time in the engineering phase and also in the construction because you can run your engineering and your construction in parallel you can see that's all your field cable will came and land on those terminals. So your cable come and lands, even if it is first two, three signals are input, next are output or, or digital even, then you change the modules here to match your signal. But how the signal data goes to the controller or the highway? They have two units, those two units communicate digitally with all of those modules and get the data from them and then update the data on the highway to the controllers. Looking at your wiring, you can see that here we have our cable from the side land on the, this is a conductors. So conductor one, two, three, four. So I think this is a digital. 100% this is a digital signal. And you can see here the spares are terminated in your terminal block. Here your spare is coiled. This is an analog cable and its pairs. And you can see that each pair has individual shields and the shields are connected to the terminal. The cables are specified and purchased by electrical discipline or electrical group. Analog signals need individual and overall shield. Digital signal is multi-core conductors. Other thing, you need the cable to be armored or not armored. If you're going to bury them in the ground or they will be in cable tray. This specification is dictated by the electrical, and the guys actually take our cable schedule from the INC guys and put them into one consolidated cable purchase order. They will specify for us that they are buying two pairs, six pairs, 12, 24. They may go with different pairs, like six or eight or four, and even in the digital conductors here, they will go between 2, 36. They will give us the specification, and then we select the suitable one from each one of those cables. The electrical group also 
they will decide how many drums of cables we going to purchase for our project. And then for the long haul, long cable, they will also specify each drum the cable will be cut from. One other thing which is dictated by the project during project phase is how many percentage used as a spare in your wires or your cable. So may you say in more than one uh, pairs, you need 10% minimum one extra pair. In multi-core conductor, you can say I need 10% always spare wires in multi-conductor. The reason for the spare wires is that you may need to add an instrument. And funny enough that laying the cable is too expensive than the cable itself. In some cases, running a new cable is a nightmare. So if you have a cable with some spare wires, you can add different transmitter, new transmitter. You can change the specification. To have a different type of let's say limit switches on your bulbs. The questions now come to you is what we are going to do with this spare wires. Are we going to terminate them in both PLC and the junction box? Are we allowed to coil them in the junction box? Are we allowed to coil them in the PLC? In fact, I have seen both scenarios in a different projects. It depends on the project and the client preference as well. What document we need to produce or to use to prepare our wiring details. Your cable schedule, this is one thing which is you will develop when you find all your instrument, where they are, the junction boxes, how many junction box, and each junction box how many instrument is connected to this junction box. You need the layout, the layout for the instrument in the field and the cable tray also layout. The layout for the instrument is used only once during construction to identify where are the devices in the field. You need panel layouts for the manufacturing of the panel and also for laying your cable or terminating your cable in the panel. And also you need the marshalling details for your cable termination and you need the wiring details. Some of these documents will have a video to describe each one of them, what is the content of each drawing or document. If you have a suggestion for a different document, Please let me know in the comment. There is a lot of videos related to the same subject, and you can find them in the playlist all about INC. Link is in the description. Thank you for like, share, and please leave a comment. See you in the next video.